If you've ever wondered what improvised defending looks like, i.e. the equivalent of improv comedy for defending, I now have an example for you. Hi guys, and welcome back to another episode episode of Rebuilding Bolton. If you're still enjoying the save, drop a like on the video. That would be most excellent. So, um, we've done something slightly different today. Uh, I decided that we weren't going to do the Sunderland game as a live comm because we had two games towards the end of the month that I felt fitted better to showing you slightly bigger games in the race. And I think that's what's more important in a way. So we've done a big chunk off camera and we're going to do a pair of live comms right together. You know how it goes. Now, we did get our youth intake preview. Um... Yeah, I'm showing you Aaron Williams because that way we can remind ourselves what a good youth intake could potentially look like. And so far, yeah, not too bad for him, really. He's even got an England Under-19 European Championship Preliminary Group A cap. I mean, if that's not the biggest thing in the world, I really don't know what is. But it's good to see that at only 16 he was capable of doing that. Because unfortunately, our youth intake this year allegedly is going to be not a great group of players. Now, that can mean all sorts of things. Why is this switch back to this again? Oh my goodness. Right, it always does this. But... You never know. Maybe we'll get a gem. I don't think so. Not a single player was highlighted as being worth. It just said, we have a lot of wingers coming through. Terrific. Are they any good? We don't know. Will the tactic be on the workshop if it's not already? And any chance of putting the team analysis squad view on Steam? So, yes. Um, I'm gonna... They should be up now. I These have prompted me to do it because you guys seem interested. So, the Bolton tactic, I feel like... Obviously, we may make changes later down the line. I'll update it. But for now, I ain't touching it. So that's going to go up on the workshop link in the description, as is the analysis view that I use to look at my squads. Uh, those of you that saw the analysis video, that will be up there as well. Uh, links in the description to both of those. So, hey, check them out as well. Let me know how you get on with the Bolton tactic. I, I think that you will need a certain set of players to make it work. But I still don't think it's the end of the world if you don't, personally. So try it out. Let me know how you get on. Like I said at 2.44, how do you know when there are youth intakes in other countries? Okay, so here's how you figure out, or find out rather, how there are, when there are youth intakes in other countries. It's a simple one, actually. Now, you can do this two ways. Either you can do Control w on the keyboard. Doesn't always work, but usually it brings you over to the Transfers World page, or rather, usually just the World page. I think sometimes it takes you to Transfers, depending on when you were last on the page. Then, if you go to Transfers, you can go to Youth Intake, and bam, this menu literally just shows you all the youth intakes that are possible. So, we've had a few games off camera. We're back today for a pair of big fixtures towards the top of the league. Let's get cracking. First up, hilariously, we had our replay against Walsall. And would you believe it finished in a nil-nil? Maybe it's just like a League 2 thing. Whenever we come up against the League 2 side, it's just like nil-nil incoming. So, over two games against Walsall now, I think we've created nearly five goals worth of XG. And somehow they finished nil-nil over 90 minutes, another 90 minutes, and a further half an hour. Thank God we won on penalties in the end with Sarsovic, Clough, Richards, and Isgrove putting us through. We'll play Bristol City in the FA Cup third round. That is going to be our live com at the start of the next video because that one could be kind of interesting. We might have a chance there if we're fresh enough, and that would be fantastic because we need the money. Next up in the league, though, it was a home against Sunderland. Now, if you've ever wondered what improvised defending looks like, i.e. the equivalent of improv comedy for defending, I now have an example for you. And this is that. So, five minutes into the game, the ball is whipped forward. Easy to deal with here for Simons. Except no, because he just knocks it around the side, runs into his teammate, and Will Grigg is able to score for Sunderland to make it 1-0 after five minutes. Bad times for us. Thankfully, we win a penalty 15 minutes later. Guy Porteous slots it home for 1-1. Luckily, though, with seven minutes to go, Politic got a ball, whipped it over the top for Guy Porteous to go through on goal for his second goal of the night and to win the match for us. What a performance from Porteous. Things you like to see. Porteous is not in my save, even though I have the Scottish League loaded. Okay, so Porteous is a regen. You will not see many regen faces in my saves anymore because I'm using the Z gens. That's why he looks real. I think it's awesome. But yes, Porteous is a regen. Basically, now consider any player that comes through that's under the age of about 17, 18 to be a regen from now on. They may look real, but they're not. The robots are taking over. Next up, we hosted a sort of semi-struggling Cambridge and took a while to break them down, to be fair. Delfonso getting down this right-hand side eventually is able to whip a ball in, and there was MPH, Miles Pert Harris, off the bench to give us a very, very crucial win. Wasn't the best performance from us, but Pert Harris, sensational, uh, coming off the bench to give us that. We've struggled to rotate this team around. Even Booty was playing at left-back today, and he got a 7.6 there. What a god! We then combined that in the snow here in Bolton with our fourth consecutive home match, third in the league as well, which was nice. Rodol Richards here. Zach Clough whips that one through a crowd of players off after he come off the bench at half time to make it two, uh, sorry, one nil. And then with 10 minutes to go, Xavi Simons getting the ball out on this right-hand side. Eventually, he's able to get this ball into a decent area and it was able to be poked home by Rodel Richards with a lovely header. Bottom of the table, Gillingham was, so we would have expected to win this match, but it still took us a little while to get the win in the end, but we did it. And getting three straight victories like that, all at home, admittedly, against some weaker sides, had to be done. And I'm glad we did it. But then I think you could argue, 
that the uh, the inertia of this whole affair kind of caught up with us. We were actually really deep this time when the kick, the kick was taken. Still didn't stop him from drilling one past the goalkeeper, though. That time the players actually did drop, but didn't have any effect. Then, 30 minutes into the game, ball was whipped in, headed on, and O'Connor puts it at the back of the net for 2-0 to Coventry City. This is our worst performance of the year by some margin. It's almost like the inertia just came back. Then 65 minutes on the clock, ball put out wide to Darbo here. Loads of bodies in there, and unfortunately, we couldn't get anywhere near it, and Ngando makes it 3-0 to Coventry City. And don't worry, there was still time for us to embarrass ourselves even more as Shipley's lovely free kick from the edge of the area made it 4-0 to Coventry City. That being said, I still feel 4-0 was a bit harsh on us, but nevertheless, we probably had that one coming because we just couldn't get anywhere bloody near them in this game. Look at our XG for the second half. It was just like, nope, not having it. Thankfully, that little run right before it definitely pulled us up the league a little bit. 46 points on the board. We're in fourth place now. Sorry, third place now. We do have a game in hand. It's annoying, though, because had we managed to beat uh, Coventry City in that last game, which admittedly would have been tough, we'd have been right within touching distance of Portsmouth and Ipswich, who have just been sort of stumbling a little bit. It's still pretty damn tight in there, particularly as Blackpool and Wickham have played the same number of games as us, but we do still have that five-point gap. And a question of the day for you. What do you want for Christmas? What, 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 what do you want Santa to bring you this year? Let me know in the comments. If you've got any ideas for a question of the day, drop those in the comments too. Hashtag QOTD or not. So, first game is today away at Grimsby Town. Our next one is against Doncaster, who... Okay, they were doing better when I thought about this, but they are at least doing better than Sunderland are, who have slipped quite down uh, dramatically since I actually said we were going to do the life come against them. So I think I made the right decision. But here is a big one. We lose to Grimsby. We don't actually go below them, but it's it's bad times because we did beat them 4-0 earlier this year. The question then becomes, who's actually going to start for us in this game? Oh, God. The, the sacred rest symbol. Oh, dear. Right. This might take a minute. Let's figure this out. So, mm -mm, no, that's not happening. Per Harris has been forced a bit deeper lately, and surprisingly, he's actually performed quite well there, but I'd rather he didn't have to play there. Christian Noble's Noble is going to have to drop out again, which means Delaney can come into that middle slot, I suppose. Hosanna's had to come in as well because we've had injuries to Kyoso and Jones, I believe, as well. Is Oh, no, he's knackered. It, it's that time of the year. Sarsovic has only just come back to fitness as well. He's not ready yet either. Okay, let's, let's mess this around. We'll figure it out. So Richards, obviously, through the middle. No doubt about that. Isgro struggled a little bit as of late, so I'm going to move Porteous out to the right-hand side and put Zaki Clough through the middle. Or not. Right, let's try that again. So Hosanna and Maskell, this is where we're struggling a little bit. Booty's not really ready for this. I, I think we might have to go with a Pert Harris and Simons midfield. It's not the end of the world, but it's I'd much rather have that booty Sarsovic partnership. It works so much better. What particularly doesn't help is that our next match, there's a one-day gap. So I, these guys are all going to be in bed when the next game comes along. I can feel it. It's a lovely day in Grimsby here as we hopefully come to ruin their dreams. Now, beating them 4-0 in the first game this season may have been a bit of a, a strange one because they didn't seem to get going until about four or five matches into the year. And then they've been very, very good, arguably even better than us in that period. Uh, although also arguably not because, you know, we're above them. Obviously, with the transfer window coming up soon, I am sort of scouting and looking at players. But to be honest, I don't really want to sign any more players that we i don't really feel like we need any just yet and it would only cost us money and with the the financial situation isn't ideal i want to sort of shoestring it as long as we can really oh simon's round the side for porteous is that an own goal oh no it's not an own goal guy porteous gets his seventh goal of the year now he's starting to look quite good i love him he can play in so many different positions and yeah he's officially won that starting spot lovely ball through to him i think it was simon's that knocks this around the side for him i think it was off of hosanna round the side and porteous just yeah, he's sliding in with the defender, gets it under the goalkeeper, and we already have the lead. Porteous is seventh of the year. If he gets 10 this year, I'll be stoked for him. Off to a flyer. Zach Clough to take this in place of Regan Booty. Good ball in, and oh, hello. Rodo Richards is bringing this down. He's into the box as well. Edge of the box for Zach Clough. Oh, what a... Oh, he's missed it. Okay, I thought that was straight in. Hosanna through for Rodo Richards. What a great stop from McKeown. That should have been 2-0. Me down this left-hand side. Hopefully we can block the cross. We do. Is there a chance for a breakaway? Porteous has dropped very, very deep to pick this up. He's just sort of jogging forward right now, waiting for the attack to develop before he makes his run. He may not need to. Uh, uh, he's going to end up getting it anyway, I think, with Hosanna out on this right-hand side. Porteous knocking inside. Here he comes. Go on. Goes back outside. That's a great strike from Porteous over the crossbar. I fully appreciate this could be another one of those situations where Matt gets shiny new young player, wants them to do well, therefore overrates everything they do. I'm prone to that in the past, and I'm not going to stop now. So let's see how Porteous gets on for the rest of this game. But he has at least scored on the night. Oh, that's a good ball in for Tilly. Defenders are there, and it's... Wow, that's clipped off the crossbar as well. It looks like it will go out for a goal kick. Pollock just... Oh my God, Pollock just dumped one through, and Williams is in. George Williams, former Fulham player there, puts that one just wide. That was a big chance for Grimsley Town there. Well, half-time's come along, and uh, yeah, I'd say we probably just about deserve our lead. We, we sort of... We've created little dribs and drabs since then, but you can sort of feel Grimsby slowly working their way back into it as well. Got to be careful here. Plenty of time, though. I think if we work our game, they'll have to come forward. We can maybe grab ourselves a second goal in this second half and get a very key win that would start to bring us back into that automatic promotion chase were we to get the right results against potentially Ipswich and Portsmouth later in the year. 
We've had to drag Pert Harris off. He, he's just not able to get through this. And I don't know who's going to start the next game of today's episode. It may have to be a completely rotated side. But at least we'll have the likes of Booty back. Hosanna's getting through. Oh, what a lovely pass around the side for Zach Clough. Oh, great ball through from Hosanna. Crawford to take the corner now. And Delaney's onto it. And it's a good save from McKeon. That's better. It's Tom Elliott now picks it up for Gillingham. <laughs> not Gillingham. Grimsby. What on earth was that tackle from Hosanna? He's not even in shot. Like... <laughs> That was amazing. He's flown in from about 10 feet away and slid about 30 feet along the ground. And somehow Tom Elliott still ended up with the ball. What about that for a tackle? I think something must have been said. I'm amazed Hosanna's not been pulled up on that. I know he won the ball, but Christ, excessive force much. Seeger with a nice ball downfield. We've just broken straight through them. As now Zach Clough's got it. Can he find the right pass? He sort of does. Richards! It's a great save from McKeon. Richards has gone off the ball a little bit lately. We're not seeing that free-flowing magic that we saw earlier this season. Oh, Hosanna's pulled into that space brilliantly. Lovely inverted wing backery there from Hosanna. Will he strike it at goal again? He does! And McKeon's forced to tick it over. He loves a long shot, does my man Bryce. Ball over the top from Tilly. Oh, God. Williams is onto it. Is this surely not? No, 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 no. Oh, he's offside. He's offside. Phew. We're fine. That would have been an absolute kick in the teeth for the lads there, but it looks like we are going to do it. Okay, he hasn't, but there we go. Grimsby Town 1. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Grimsby Town 0. Bolton Wanderers 1. Big win for us there. Porteous again did well. Robbie Cundy was excellent in this game. And Hosanna as well was really getting to good places. Great result for us. Really important. And that leaves us, well, five points clear of Lincoln City now. We're really looking good at maybe there is an outside shot at it. Right, straight to the next game. God knows who's going to be able to play in this game, but we'll give it our best shot. Okay. Yep, that's everyone. <laughs> everyone except Xavi Simons and the goalkeeper. Cool. Right, okay. Okay, so at least Critchlow Noble's sort of back, but Delaney is just cream crackered. I'm going to have to go with Alex Baptiste. I just can't risk that one. Kyoso's sort of back, but to be honest, is Hosanna available? Because I actually quite liked him in that last game. Oh, no, he's knackered. Booty to the left. Uh, I'd rather play Cissé at left back, in all honesty. I've actually played him here a few times. Don't ask me why he works, but he has worked all right. And I'd rather do that. Delfonso through the middle. Uh, is that because Rodo Richards is? Yep. Okay. News has it that Guy Porteous is actually unable to stand up straight. Like, he physically cannot get out of his sofa. And as such, he will be left out of the matchday squad today. I believe he's had too much Christmas turkey. And really, from his performances lately, I don't blame him. But there's a few other players out of this squad. Um, I'm going to need your answers on this one. Why are they not in the squad? Like, what have they done over Christmas that's meant that they're out of this, other than just pure tiredness? Because it seems sus suspicious to me. I'm going to bring Sarsovic back in. We'll put Delfonso through the middle. We'll do it like this. Let's hope for the best. Let's get cracking. Let's get our revenge for throwing away a 3-0 lead against them earlier this season. They were considered a much better side back then. Nowadays, uh, they've sort of fallen down into mid-table. We need to be coming here and trying to pull something off. I'm concerned about starting Alex Baptiste in a League One game. I've got to be honest with you. But at least we've got a booty Sarsovic partnership in the midfield. That's always a good sign. And, oh, I am going to miss Guy Porteous, though. Uh, while he's in his turkey coma, we'll be hoping to put something past Doncaster right now. It's nice to see the likes of Sarsovic back in the team, though, after his little uh, layoff. Oh, no, that's a terrible pass. That is a good ball for Taylor, though. Doncaster could be in straight away. And they are. Inside a minute, John Taylor, the Doncaster curse continues. Um, That was a particularly straight ball. Straight out to the wide area that time. It wasn't even like it was through the middle. Like, we're pretty much safe there. And Taylor, I mean, it's just straight into that space. And, well, unfortunately, he is up against Alex Baptiste, which might be part of the reason why that goal went in. I've got to be honest. Oh, well, we've got a bit of comebacking to do right now because we pull ourselves into a nice position. But the Coventry defeat... And not being able to take our chances against Gillian do concern me. It's a bit of a catch-22. Delfonso getting into the box, though. Oh, and he's been fouled. That's surely it. Right, well, Sarsovic has turned to get a penalty for us. We could be level within three minutes here. Come on, Anthony. His penalty record's been a bit less than stellar for us so far in this save. Hopefully today he can step up when it matters, and he does. Don Castor Rovers won. Bolton Wanderers won. Sarsovic's eighth goal of the season. Very, very nice indeed. I fully expect to see him into double figures, particularly as he's been out lately. So good goal record. Nice finish in the bottom corner. Exactly what we need to get this game back going again. And now it is Groves hurt himself. Oh, joy of joys. Zach Clough, in you come, son. Half time, and we have absolutely dominated them. But it is only 1-1. Sarsovic, Clough, Kyoso. Can he just find that, that ball into a bit of space? He's into the box. Kiyoso and a good stop. Simons, oh, look at the overlap. And Cissé will still get on to this, though. He's going to have to do this first time, and he does. And Delfonso, that is a lovely, lovely piece of play from Bolton. Oh, ho, ho. gorgeous. Everything from the RCM pass out to Cissé. The lovely cross, and then a gorgeous finish. It's just a wonderful spot. I think it was, oh, no. No, it was actually Javi Simons. I thought he'd overhit this, but Cissé just goes with his weaker foot here, puts a delicious ball across, and there's Nathan Delfonso. Goalkeeper maybe could have done better. We have the lead away at Doncaster now. I think we deserve that. Great work from Cissé. 
I'm going to bring Nathan Wally on for his Bolton debut here to replace Alex Baptiste because I think he's got a bit more pace as Francis is in and it's nearly in the back of the net as well. Amazingly, Portsmouth have actually lost the lead of the league as things stand as Sarsovic. Is oh, Nathan Wally scored on his Bolton debut. Nathan Wally scores his first ever senior goal. Well, I'm very glad I brought him on now. What a moment for the young lad. Wow, that's really nice for him. Uh, we go 3-1 up here, and I think that's a deserved moment. But also, just to see Nathan Wally scoring on his debut, great leap from the lad. Again, the goalkeeper maybe could have got that. Doesn't matter, because Wally scored. Oh, we just haven't been able to do it quite enough this year. And, oh, hello, Edwards is into the box, though, and he's been absolutely cleaned out, and that is a penalty, apparently. I mean, I thought he got the ball personally. But now Sarsovic has a chance to score his second goal of the night. Now, two penalties are very rarely scored in one game. So I'll be amazed if he nets this one as well. And he's missed the goal entirely. Anthony living up to his reputation there. Doncaster one, Bolton three. Should have been four potentially, but it was not to be. This looks like it's going to do it. Uh, we've thermally played them off the park here, getting the ultimate revenge for what happened in the last game earlier this season. We've got our three goals. We've come from behind. Very, very good work from the lads. And it is Doncaster over one, Bolton Wanderers three. Big result for us. Performances like this are why I feel like we're still not out of this automatic promotion race anytime soon. And we need to get the right results in those games when we play them, but it's on the card still. I can feel it. But that's just Christmas time for you. So next up, that's a good run of games. We've done well. Uh, no absolute batterings in there other than the one we lost. <laughs> so we're going to come back and start off with Bristol City in the FA Cup third round. That's a big game for us because we could do with the cash. And then I think we might as well just tr crack on and get all the way through to the end of the month against Shrewsbury as well. So if you've enjoyed this episode, I hope you have. Drop a like. That'd be lovely. If you're new to the channel, some scribble. That'd be great too. I stream on Twitch on Tuesdays, Thursdays and at the weekend to go follow there as well. And also we've got the second channel now, Straight Red Card. Go subscribe to that as well. I'll see you guys soon. Thank you so much for watching. Hold your gun. Happy bar. Bye-bye.